Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking at the murder of Brazilian TV actress and dancer Daniela Ferrante Perez Gazola by actor Guilherme de Padua and his wife Paula Nogueira Tomás. One of the most famous cases in Brazil which galvanized the country. Also apologies for my pronunciation of Brazilian Portuguese as I do not speak Portuguese and it's most likely going to sound like Italian because I majored in Italian at university. Perez was born on the 11th of August 1970 in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. She was the only daughter of Gloria Perez, a Brazilian screenwriter best known for Camillo das Indias, broadcast from the 19th of January 2009 until the 11th of September 2009, which was broadcast on TV Globo, with Gloria Perez winning Best Televoquela at the 37th International Emmy Awards. Her father was Luis Carlos Salpiquet Perez, who was born in 1940 and was an engineer. She was one of three children, with a younger brother Rodrigo, born in 1972, and another younger brother Rafael, born in 1977. At five, Perez began dancing, and as a teenager was invited to dance professionally for Vaquilu Dancour, a dance company based in Rio de Janeiro. In 1984, her parents divorced. Her first role in television was as a tango dancer in one episode in the novella Kangana do Japayo, which was broadcast on Rede Manchete from the 19th of July 1989 until the 25th of March 1990. It was on the set of Kangana do Japayo that she met Raul Gazzola, who she would marry in 1990. Following this, she played the dancer Sio in Barica de Alguel, which was written by her mother and broadcast on Red de Globo from the 20th of August 1990 until the 31st of May 1991. She featured in 243 episodes. Perez then starred in one episode of Odono do Mundo as Yara Maquiel, which was broadcast from the 20th of May 1991 to the 2nd of January 1992 on Red de Globo. In 1992, her mother created a new telenovela, De Corpo e Alma, broadcast on Rede Global, with the series beginning on the 3rd of August 1992. One of her co-stars was Brazilian actor Guilherme de Padua. Padua was born on the 2nd of November 1969 in Belo Horizonte and moved to Rio de Janeiro to become an actor. He commenced acting at the age of 20 in the West German movie Via Apia about a Lufthansa flight attendant named Frank with HIV, who goes to Rio de Janeiro to look for a man named Mario, with whom he had a one night stand, with Mario, a male prostitute, who infected Frank with AIDS. Padua played the role of Joseph, a male prostitute. Padua had a bit part in the Brazilian comedy TV show Mico Preto, broadcast in 1990, playing Nakiso for three episodes, which was broadcast on Rede Globo, and played a glorified extra in the TV series Salome, playing a boy in the street with the series also broadcast on Rede Globo. However, for Padua, his big break was De Corpore Alma, playing the role of Bira from the first episode. In the same year as De Corpo e Alma began broadcasting in 1992, Padua married Paula Nogueira Thomas, who became pregnant. Perez played the Virgin Mary in the Christmas special Roberto Carlos Espisal, broadcast on the 25th of December 1992. She would be dead three days later. On the 28th of December 1992, Perez, having left filming at Rede Globo Studio on Estrada dos Bandeirantes 6700 in Jacarapaga and Curiquia in Rio de Janeiro, she was ambushed in front of a gas station at 8.30pm with two gas station attendants witnessing what took place, with Padua and Thomas ambushing Perez and forcing her into their Volkswagen Santana. Thomas took Perez's Ford Escort and followed her husband and kidnapped Perez. A lawyer who witnessed the ambush took note of the number plates. Padua drove into the thicket in Barra a Tijuca, a neighbourhood in the west zone of Rio de Janeiro. There, Perez was stabbed 16 to 20 times in the heart, left breast and neck, causing large internal hemorrhage, with her left lung perforated, causing a loss of blood as well as an abrasion on her shoulder. It is estimated that she was dead within two minutes. 
Bardo and Thomas then drove their Volkswagen Santana home and changed the number plate of a car before driving to Rede Globo Studio on Estrada dos Bandietas 6700 in Jacarapaga and Cruzia in Rio de Janeiro. Police would find the body of Perez and her Ford Escort. With Paris's mother taken to a police station, she was informed of her daughter's death, with Padua travelling to a police station to comfort Gloria Perez as well as hug Raul Gazzola, who were both inconsolable with grief. The next day, in line with Brazilian tradition, the funeral of Perez took place on the 29th of December 1992, with Padua in attendance. The murder of Perez made headlines across Brazil and even overshadowed the impeachment of then-president of Brazil, Fernando Afonso Colo de Melo, on charges of corruption by the Brazilian Senate, which took place on the same day as the funeral of Perez. She was buried at Cemitério Jao Joaia Batista in Botafogo, in Municipio de Rio de Janeiro, in Rio de Janeiro. However, based on the description of witnesses, police linked the Volkswagen Santana to Padua, despite the car's number plates having been changed, and Padua was arrested under flagrante delicito. Flagrante delicito, specified under the Brazilian Code of Criminal Procedure Article 301, indicates that when the criminal is caught in the act of committing a crime with the crime conceived at the moment, when police authorities or members of the public can visualize the crime having taken place, there is no need for evidence or inquiries to result in an arrest. However, Padua's lawyer filed an appeal and a judge granted him provisional release as the arrest on flagrante delicito was deemed to be illegal. Padua then went on the run with a new judicial decision decreeing a preventative detention for the murder of Perez. The actors and crew of De Copo e Alma united in unity to find Padua and search buildings throughout the south of Rio de Janeiro. After a few days, Padua surrendered to authorities with himself and Tomás arrested. Both were held without bail. Shortly after their arrest, the pair divorced. Padua's character was immediately written out of De Copo e Alma with no explanation with his last episode having been the 129th episode of the series. His scenes filmed thereafter were removed. The episodes featuring Perez continued to air until the 146th episode, which aired on the 19th of January 1993, with her character written out as she went on a skiing holiday, with tributes paid by actors and staff of the show. The final episode of De Copo e Alma, episode 185, was broadcast in memory of Perez and aired on the 5th of March 1993. While in prison, Tomás gave birth to her son, Felipe, in May 1993. The murder of Perez struck such a chord within Brazil that the Brazilian Congress debated re-enacting capital punishment for non-military offences, which had been abolished under the 1988 constitution. However, this did not come to fruition. In the same year, O Crime das Novela das 8 was released by Sergio de Souza, outlining the murder of Perez. In 1993, Gloria Perez started a movement to make qualified homicide a heinous crime under the 1990 Heinous Crimes Law, with 1.3 million signatures amassed in just three months. This was delivered by Gloria Perez to the Brazilian National Congress in October 1993, with the heinous crimes law altered to include homicide under law 8.930-1994 by the then Brazilian president Itamar Franco in August 1994. In the same year, Perez was posthumously nominated for the Revelation of the Year in Torfeo Imprensa for her interpretation of Yasmin in De Copa e Alma. In 1995, while in prison, Padua wrote the book History That Brazil Does Not Know, which was edited and set to be published by Escriba Editoria Multimida de Artes Gafisas. He intended to launch his book during the Binel do Livro, held in Rio de Janeiro in 1995. However, Gloria Perez obtained an injunction through the Secretary of the Public Security of Minas Gerais to seize copies of the book, with Padua and the publisher facing a fine of 20,000 Brazilian rias for each day that this was not compiled with, which remained in effect from the 20th of August 1995 until the 9th of April 1996. As a result, the sale of the book was prohibited, and the only people to see the book were the jurors at the trial of Padua and Tomás, with the book distributed by prosecutor Francisco Sembranelli as a way to demonstrate the injuries and defamations that had manifested against Perez. 
On the 24th of January 1997, the trial of Padua and Tomas took place, with Tomas not pleading guilty and trying to blame Padua. After 67 hours and 58 minutes on the 26th of January 1997, Padua was sentenced by Judge Josa Geraldo Antonio to 19 years in prison, with Tomas sentenced to 18 years and 6 months in prison for motivated qualified homicide. The sentence was applauded by the audience. But what the hell motivated the pair in murdering Perez? Well, it was something worthy of a telenovela and the sort of thing that could only happen in Brazil. Padua was angry and frustrated that he could not get more airtime on De Corpore Alma and believed that his character, Bira, was not getting the airtime that it deserved. Indeed, in the weeks prior to Perez's murder, Bira had been cut from several scenes. Padua believed that as the daughter of the creator and author of the series and one of the main stars of the show, Perez could help him get more scenes as he believed that Gloria Perez was cutting him out of the show. Hence, Padua murdered her in jealousy that she had not helped him to get his character more airtime on De Corpore Alma. Tomás was jealous of the interactions between Perez and Padua, as well as the sex scenes between Bira and Yasmin Bianchi in De Corpore Alma, with both characters in love with each other and hence agreed to participate in the murder. Again, this was a sort of crime that could only happen in Brazil. However, both Padua and Tomás would spend barely any time in prison, with both granted parole in 1999 for good behaviour before the Criminal Execution Court of Minas Gerais granted Padua a 25% reduction in his sentence, which was reduced to 14 years, 2 months and 26 days. In 2001, both were released after spending 6 years and 9 months in prison, having served one third of their sentence, with Sembranelli stating it was a crime that practically went unpunished. They served very little time. Tomás would remarry in 2001, marrying... Sergio Ricardo Rodriguez Pexotto and changed her name to Paola Noguera Pexotto with Felipe adopted by his stepfather. Both would later have a daughter. Since she was released from prison, Tomás has not spoken to Padua. Tomás then studied law at university. Padua moved back to Belo Horizonte and would marry fashion producer Paola Maya, who was 14 years younger than him, who he met at the evangelical Lagoina. Baptist Church in Belo Horizonte, a Baptist Church in Belo Horizonte with 92,000 members. He had joined the church after his release from prison. In 2003, the book Passion in the Dock was released by Luiza Nagib Elouf, analysing the trial of Padua and Tomás and the murder of Pérez. Maya released the book Que Amor e Esse, the real story of Guilherme de Padua, telling the story of her husband. In 2008, a chapter of a book, Dangerous Minds of a Psychopath Next Door, by psychiatrist Anna Beatriz Barbosa Silva, which became the second best-selling non-fiction book in Brazil in 2008, had a chapter which explored the murder of Perez. In the book, Silva noted that she saw traces of psychopathy in Padua. In 2012, Padua started working as an IT manager at Itapio Vidros. In 2014, he divorced Maya, who would tell Rio de Janeiro newspaper Odia on the 11th of August 2015 that he was a great manipulator. On the 29th of April 2016, he was ordered to pay 440,000 Brazilian reais to Gloria Perez and Gazola in compensation for the murder of Perez, including burial, funeral, procedural and lawyer costs, which equated to an additional 44,000 Brazilian reais on top of the 440,000 Brazilian reais. On the 14th of March 2017, Padua married Juliana Lacerda, a stylist at the registry office in Belo Horizonte, and on the 12th of December 2017, he became a pastor at the Evangelical Lagoina Baptist Church in Belo Horizonte. On the 28th of December 2017, the TV show Video Show, which was broadcast on TV Globo, on the 25th anniversary of the murder of Perez, aired an episode in memory of her. On the 24th of March 2020, both Padua and La Cerda attended a pro Bolsonaro demonstration, because of course, which sparked outrage on Twitter. In 2021, he began preparing his youngest stepdaughter to be an actress, which was heavily criticised by Gloria Perez. 
In 2022, HBO Max released the documentary Brutal Pact, the murder of Daniela Perez, which consisted of five episodes and was released on the 21st of July 2022 and included interviews with Gloria Perez, Gazola, her friends and colleagues. In the final episode of the show, Gloria Perez revealed that she lives in the same neighbourhood of Rio de Janeiro as Tomás and that she fears for her life. On the 2nd of August 2022, Padua released a YouTube video which was 7 minutes and 58 seconds in length under the title Pedier.de Pedaio, asking for forgiveness from Gloria Perez and Gazola for the murder of Perez. However, the video generated a lot of revolt and it was believed that he only released this video due to HBO Max releasing Brutal Pact, the murder of Daniela Perez, and that he didn't really have any sincerity or forgiveness, with the documentary bringing the murder of Perez back into the subconsciousness of Brazilians 30 years after her murder. On the 7th of August 2022, then, and I'd like to specify just how great it is to say then, President Jair Bolsonaro and First Lady Michelle Bolsonaro attended a service at Lagoina Baptist Church with pictures of Juliana Lacerda with Michelle Bolsonaro posted onto Instagram. However, Michelle Bolsonaro claimed that she did not know Lacerda. Moreover, President Bolsonaro and First Lady Michelle Bolsonaro denied rumours that they had lunch with Padua with Lacerda noting that after the service, Bolsonaro had gone to Brasilia while his wife had lunch with relatives of Pastor Marcio Valadaio. Padua died of a heart attack on the 6th of November 2022 in Belo Horizonte. Lacerda would state on social media, You are at your father's side and I thank you for dying in my arms because I was able to say goodbye to you a lot. You felt no pain and just slept in my arms. You're gone but you left me a better and more mature woman in every way. And the best, no one else can judge you because you won't listen anymore. Your suffering and judgement of people is over my love. Rest in peace. In line with Brazilian tradition, his funeral took place the next day on the 7th of November 2022. He was buried at Semit Parque da Colina in Minas Gerais. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform yourself of when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment? It helps more me you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet. Have an amazing day and remember the truth is always more interesting than fuction.